Hello and welcome back and today I want to tell you guys about just how to install a Plex media server on your brand new QNAP 53D. Now a few things straight off the bat. Although uh, the most of today's video can be utilized by pretty much any QNAP NAS system. I'm targeting the 53D in this series largely because it have just arrived and a number of you may buy the 253D, 453D or 653D as an affordable Plex media server. So I'm going to be utilizing one of those devices today and although I'm targeting the 53D more than anything in this video it's worth highlighting that this can be utilized by largely any QNAP NAS. Also I will highlight that the 653D I am utilizing it has got six hard drives and a RAID 5 inside, and I'm utilizing an eight gig memory capacity. So consequently, your performance may be slightly different to mine. And I am using screen recording software OBS, which means that with OBS running in the background, there may be the odd dip in performance. So I do apologize, that's nothing to do with the QNAP or the PC really, it is just the rendering happening from screen recording. So, Plex Media Server, quite straightforward application. Though you've used it before, it is a great optional, um, you know, a great option if you're going to be going for something with your own uh, movies, box sets, and stuff, and you don't want to use Netflix or Amazon's Prime Video site. You just want to use your media on your NAS and watch it on your devices. And if you're going to be using it on Fire TV, Smart TV, or over the internet on client devices, Plex is a great way to go. It scrapes all that metadata in the background from IMDb and other review sites. It's a great little tool. Now, if you want to install it, head into the Q QTS applications and from there go to All Apps. Now, you can either search for the word Plex up here or scroll down. And right at the bottom, in the third-party applications, you will find Plex Media Server. There we go. Now, Plex Media Server on this is version 1.16, but there is indeed a newer version. I believe they're up to 1. Um, I think 1.9. Uh, uh, I will double check. But for now, we're going to install the default version, and during this video, I'll even show you how to upgrade to the newest version later. But go ahead and click install. This is now going to install Plex Media Server on our QNAP NAS. Now, this can take um, a very a variable amount of time, depending on your own internet connection. And there's a few things you should be doing in the background. One, you can look into getting a Plex Media Server account yourself. Now, you will get the opportunity to create one during the installation. But if you've already got one, good for you. And if you haven't, just head over to Plex's own website. And in their own website, you'll be able to find a link to create a completely free Plex Media Server account that you can then link with your NAS and therefore access all of your media on your phones, your tablets, your TV and more. But if you want to take advantage of something called transcoding, then you're going to have to have a Plex Pass. That is the paid for subscription service from Plex. Uh, now, transcoding is something that's enable, uh, is possible on most NAS devices. But what I will say is that transcoding is something that if you utilize the QNAP's own video applications like Video Station, that I'm going to talk about in my next video, then you can take advantage of transcoding natively at no additional cost. And you can use their own video app, which is great. But Plex, in order for Plex to use transcoding on the NAS, known as hardware transcoding, you will need that Plex pass. It's between five and 10 pounds a month. And I'll even show you where in the settings to look to enable transcoding. While the Plex Media app is being installed, it's worth also making sure that all of your movies, box sets, music, photos, or whatever are in some preset folders. So as you see here, I've got a folder on my NAS called Multimedia, and I've created individual folders for different things. I've created one, one folder for um, box sets. I've got these for TV shows. I've got another one for movies, where we've got movies there that we're going to be indexing for Plex. We've got one for music and more. So we have lots of ways in which we can... Um, have all of our media distributed on the NAS. We can upload them directly into the browser window, or you can mount a network drive like I've showed you in the past in the previous videos of this series, and then just dump files directly onto the NAS there. But just make sure that all of your files and folders are in those different directories. 
if you're going to be utilizing tv shows i recommend make sure episodes are utilizing the right um shape of files so you want to make sure your tv shows are um s and then that's for seasonal series and e for episode and listed accordingly now i'm going to fast forward to when plex media server is finished downloading once it's finished downloading we're going to execute this application and i'll show you how to set up your plex media server on your qnap nas so now the plex media server application has been installed we just need to go ahead and click open now the more astute of you may have noticed that i'm using incognito window here and that's because i've already signed into plex on a number of different NASes on this pc system previously you won't need to use an incognito window so don't worry if you're not using one for now just click open here or head into the options and click open here or on the desktop you will have noticed that it would have created a brand new app button on your desktop so go ahead and open plex now it will open in a brand new tab keep an eye on this number here this is your ip this is ultimately your device's location on the local area network it's where your nas lives when you're setting up this for the very first time it will ask you to log in with the credentials you created now what you see next may change depending on how if you're utilizing a plex media server pass that has been associated with a nas in the past or if this is a plex pass that's never been used with a nas i'm going to utilize the throwaway account that we created previously this account we've utilized in other videos has been featured on other plex media server accounts so once we sign into the device the screen that we see will differ now when you log into a NAS as a Plex Media Server, this is the screen you'll see. You've associated your Plex Media Server account that you've created in advance with this NAS. And as you can see, we're no longer on the, on the Plex.tv website. We are back on our local area network. There's the NAS and there's the IP, exactly the same. So next, click Got It to let it know that you're aware of what you need to do next. You have to name the server, and if you don't rename the server, it will appear as whatever you named the NAS when you first set it up with the account. From there, I say if you want to be able to access your Plex Media outside, so in this case, accessing the media on the Plex Media uh, NAS, we want to do over the internet as well as the network. So I'm going to click tick, click next, and now it will set up the identity of your Plex Media Server account, as well as linking it with your Plex Media Server subscription account. So the Plex Media Server, I should probably backtrack a bit there. The Plex Media Server is the NAS. The Plex account is what you created with Plex. And now the two are linked. So the next thing you need to do is tell the Plex application where to find your media. So if you click the Add Library tag, select the media you want to do first. So in this case, I want to find the films. Then click add folder, go to browse for media folder, and it will list all the available folders on your NAS. Now, if we go to the first folder, we can find all of the different directories on our NAS. Each one will show different directories within the NAS that we've created. And wherever you've put your media, please go ahead and find it. So if we scroll down, we can look at some of the shared areas I've created on the NAS. You can also sub-categorize by shared areas on the NAS, as I've done there. And I'm going to find that movies folder that I created earlier. There's my movies folder and there's the movies. I then click add. And there you go. That is now added it. And you can even do advanced options if you want to change some of the ways in which it works in the background and where it gets a lot of its information. Different websites. Do you want it to include trailers? Do you want it to include a lot of information from review sources? There's lots of different options open to you. You can even get information from the movie database as well as other sources too for slightly more risque content as well as changing the country that the information comes from in case it's regional then click add library we've now added a directory for films so let's go ahead now and add more directories this time for other locations so for example i'm now going to add tv shows and box sets it will then add those and again 
lots of options available and often it will change the sources of information adding in the background depending on the type of media we're adding. Now we've added TV programs and films. Next, we'll add music. Again, add folder, add media, go to where you've put your media on the NAS, find the location, there's more media, click add, and again, lots of options currently available if you want to go through them for getting information from iTunes, getting information from other sources, as well as if there's embedded tags on the information itself for playlisting and more, you can save all of that information if you choose. Finally, you can add photos if you like, and if you do want to take advantage of Plex Pass, which has now got AI photo recognition built in, that's something you can do, although the QNAP already has that featured with QMaggy. I'm going to go ahead and add the photo library as well of those albums I've got there. And again, there's more options there, and it will automatically tag utilizing the AI power if it chooses. And finally, for another video coming up soon, I'm going to add a random folder that you can create of your own bespoke content. And this is going to be for my 1080p and 4K tests in a video coming very, very soon where we're going to bench test Plex on this NAS. And again, share, go into the folder, wrong folder there, go to multimedia, and go into where I've listed that content. And again, advanced options will be a little bit more random are the options you can go through and again if you're using home footage you know photos of weddings and you know stuff that you've done they're not going to be listing much here but for now we're going to add those and we've added those libraries to our plex media server now on the 53d next plex apps if you like you can add some of the third-party applications from plex and add them and bolt them on to your plex media server a lot of these will use third-party sources and third-party apps such as web shows and other online media sources you may not want to do those but it's something you can come back to i've purposefully disabled internet connectivity where i am right now to make sure that it doesn't associate my plex media server account that exist with other NASes on this device and then therefore not showing you the right screens hence why that didn't work but that'll work for you then click done it's now going to find all the media that we've told it to all of the resources that we've pointed this device at and in the background it's now going to start indexing and finding all of that lovely background metadata related to our NAS. Everything from thumbnails to descriptions to trailers to recommendation, cast lists, descriptions and more. You can add folders and libraries and add more as you go there as well as if you have multiple servers listed like I do you can then browse and swap and change to different media sources. You can even go to some of the online platforms that are included. If we go to my home page here and head back, oh wrong tab there, we can make our way into that Plex Pass. As you can see, it does take a little while for your contents to be updated based on your internet connection and the complexity of your library. If we head over and look at one of my other NASes that we've got linked to this account from a previous video, we can see that it's already browsed and created thumbnails and information on different sources, although even that is still being updated now. We can go to different thumbnails and even get descriptions on different things that we play, where it will even get cast lists and more, even pulling reviews from online resources. And remember that if you want to browse this content on your Amazon Fire Stick, mobile phone, or any third-party source, even home consoles that let you install Plex Media Server, all you need is your Plex information, your login information, enter that, and it will find this NAS via the internet, and it doesn't just have to be on a local area network. And that has been how to create a Plex Media Server on your NAS. It's incredibly straightforward, and there's lots of options for you to create and cater to the best Plex Media Server you can build. I mentioned earlier on that I was gonna to touch on the subject of transcoding. Transcoding is when a file is reshaped in transit to be more befitting of the destination device. Say, for example, let's look at the 
For, let's look at the 4K and 1080p media test files here. Some of these are weighty, weighty, dense files. Even playing them here in the browser will be near enough impossible without ruining the screen recording software that I'm using. Now, if you play these files, if we look at, for example, this 10 megabit, so HDR quality uh, 1080p video here, if we try to play this, it will struggle quite significantly. And one of the ways in which you can improve that is with transcoding. Now, transcoding, if we make our way into the settings there in the background, is when the system, let's bring that up there, transcoder, allows you to reshape that file. So if you're watching, say, a 4K file on an old mobile phone, you want to watch a streamlined smaller version. Maybe you're on a limited data plan. Maybe you're on... Um, a device that just doesn't have the storage or playback ability to play that kind of codec file format or resolution. Transcoding allows you to change the shape of that file into something more befitting of your client device. So in order to do that, make sure you go into the settings menu, as you can see here, click the transcoder tab, and there's a drop down here. Now, this is where a Plex pass is important, because if you don't have a Plex pass, the system will not allow you to change the settings and allow you to take advantage of hardware transcoding. Otherwise, it will do software transcoding, which utilizes significantly more CPU and memory resources, which can then impact the overall performance of your NAS. But aside from that, let's wrap things up. This has been how to run a Plex media server on your QNAP NAS utilizing the 53D series. I'll be doing a full performance test of this device with Plex Media Server showing just how much CPU and memory resources are utilized while we run these tests. So do check that out. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.